I'm Jeffrey Smith, author of the book Seeds of Deception and founding director of the Institute for Responsible Technology. I want to give you a quick update on some of the issues covered in this beautiful film, Unnatural Selection. We'll start with Percy Schmeiser. In late September 2005, Percy discovered that Monsanto's Roundup Ready canola had once again contaminated his field. The plants were growing in about 50 acres along a road where farmers take canola seeds to market. Percy said, it's almost identical to how my field was contaminated in 1998. The pattern of contamination once again appeared to come from windblown seeds from passing trucks. Throughout Percy's lawsuit, Monsanto had claimed that if farmers found patented GM plants growing on their land, they should just contact the company and representatives would promptly remove the plants for free. So, on September 21st, Percy called Monsanto, who then sent a couple of people over to confirm the presence of Roundup Ready canola. Monsanto offered to hand pull its GM plants, but first, Percy had to sign a legal agreement that forever released Monsanto from any future lawsuits related to their products. The agreement also included a gag order requiring that the terms shall be treated as confidential and shall not be disclosed to others. It was the same release, according to Monsanto, that all contaminated farmers were asked to sign. Percy said, I flatly refuse to sign any contract that would take my freedom of speech or my rights away. They must think I'm absolutely crazy. On October 21st, he started removing the plants himself. He filled a half-ton truck with his first pass and then filled another. Unfortunately by then, some of the seed casings had already shattered, spreading the tiny seeds on the land. The expected damage to Percy's farm over two years is estimated at more than $50,000. Percy will invoice Monsanto for the cleanup costs, but Monsanto insists that unless Percy signs the release, they would not offer any assistance. A study published in June 2004 in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences showed that when genetically modified salmon were put into tanks with a less than adequate food supply, they became extremely violent and aggressive. Some of the frankenfish killed and even ate their rivals. Whether swimming with other GM fish or with natural salmon, the transgenic salmon experienced population crashes or complete extinctions. According to a January 2006 article in Business Week, Aquabounty is in the final stages of a five-year battle to get their fish approved by the FDA. The company hopes to achieve that by 2008. In January 2005, Monsanto was fined $1.5 million by the U.S. Justice Department for bribing up to 140 Indonesian officials between 1997 and 2002 trying to bypass environmental controls on the screening of new GM cotton crops. But their BT cotton in Indonesia was overrun by pests. About 70% of the more than 4,400 farmers growing BT cotton were unable to repay their credit after the first year of planting. BT cotton was withdrawn in 2003. Several studies in India, however, confirmed failures there as well. The largest of these, published in 2005, tracked the crop's performance in 87 villages in the state of Andhra Pradesh over a period of three years. Non-BT cotton yielded about 10% more. In some regions, particularly where farmers did not have access to irrigation, the yields from BT were a disaster. BT cotton cost 12% more, the average return to BT cotton farmers over three years was 60% less, and 71% of farmers who used BT cotton ended up with financial losses. By contrast to this independent analysis, Monsanto commissioned market research agencies, not scientists, to do their studies. One Monsanto report claimed four times the reduction in pesticide use, 12 times the yield, and 100 times the profit. In reality, BT cotton failed on many counts. Problems included increased pests and disease, brittle stems, failure to germinate, drought damage, smaller cotton balls, increased labor requirements, poorer quality and a shorter harvest season. Some farmers complained they were not able to grow other crops after the BT cotton because it had infected their soil. In the Warungal district in Andhra Pradesh, BT cotton yields were down by 30 to 60 percent and in some areas 80 percent, but the official report was tampered with. Numbers were added, ones were changed to fours. A local official confirmed on February 1, 2005 that the yield figures had been secretly increased to 2.7 times the original. The fraud was made public by Greenpeace. Two years earlier, the group had also discovered that a team representing the government's Genetic Engineering Approval Committee had grossly inflated the performance of BT cotton in Andhra Pradesh. The team claimed that a small group of farmers whom they visited 
had much greater yields and reduced costs. But Greenpeace members visited those same farmers and videotaped their interviews. The farmers described lower yields, poor quality, damaged plants, and higher labor costs. In the spring of 2005, the government of Andhra Pradesh acknowledged that the losses to BT cotton farmers for the season totaled about $10 million. Since Monsanto had signed a memorandum years earlier, vowing to cover any farmer losses due to problems with their varieties, the government demanded payment. Monsanto refused. On June 3rd, the government banned Monsanto from selling BT cotton in the state. It was still grown in Madhya Pradesh, however, where rampant wilting in 200,000 acres caused an estimated $87.5 million in damages. And in parts of Tamil Nadu, up to 75% of the BT cotton seeds failed to germinate. In November 2005, India's central government finally conceded the failure of BT cotton in Andhra Pradesh and Rajasthan. And the governor of Madhya Pradesh asked his state government to investigate the crop's failure there as well. In January 2006, the Andhra Pradesh government filed a case against Monsanto for overcharging for its BT cotton seed. The state agriculture minister said that Indian farmers are being charged more than 11 times what U.S. farmers pay. The AP government also expressed concern over the inadequate payments to farmers for producing BT cotton seeds. Low payments force farmers to hire children and teenagers for less than 50 cents per day. Two separate studies pin the blame for child labor on the seed companies, including Bayer, Monsanto, and Syngenta. At least 100,000 children and teens work 13 hours a day in Andhra Pradesh. The AP government also criticized aggressive marketing strategies, which was also described by one scathing report as unscrupulous and false. Companies used dancing girls, famous Bollywood actors, even religious leaders to pitch BT cotton. In a poster series called True Stories of Farmers Who Have Sown BT Cotton, one farmer who claimed great benefits turned out to be a cigarette salesman. Another poster gave yields that were four times what the farmer actually achieved. Farmers are now angry at being deceived. One said, Our entire village has opted only for BT cotton this year. Now we are waiting for any BT cotton company representative to come back to us so that we can tie them up in our village. Hundreds of other desperate and indebted farmers have committed suicide. Monsanto is doing field trials of a second type of BT cotton called Bolgard II. In January 2006, a monitoring and evaluation committee discovered what it described as blatant biosafety violations in field trials in five states. In violation of the law, companies encouraged farmers to sell the experimental unapproved varieties into the market. The report stated in several cases, the company has abandoned data when the crop starts performing poorly. Other trial sites were never visited or inspected by the company. About 50 farmers in Madhya Pradesh, who planted Bolgar II based on company promises of higher yields, all say their yields were less and they will sue Monsanto over their losses. In addition to economic loss, there are reports from Madhya Pradesh that BT cotton is causing allergic reactions in those coming in contact with it and that cattle that ate the BT cotton seed have died. A medical report said that 23 patients, including 10 severe cases, suffered allergic symptoms within about five hours of gathering, lifting, and even touching the cotton. Farmers' skin turned red, swelling occurred, eyes reddened, and breathlessness was experienced. Some victims suffered a burning sensation in the eyes, watering, itching, swelling of eyelashes, sneezing, and running noses. The study revealed that persons who covered their body parts remained unaffected. More information on the health risks of genetically modified food is found in the video Hidden Dangers in Kids' Meals. You can also get regular updates by subscribing to Spilling the Beans, my free newsletter available at www.responsibletechnology.org. These monthly columns are freely syndicated in publications and websites around the world. I'll share some of the health-related issues that surfaced after Hidden Dangers in Kids Meals was produced. In June 2005, a German court ordered Monsanto to make a study public in which rats fed GM corn developed kidney inflammation, altered blood cell counts, and organ lesions. At a conference in October 2005, a leading scientist from the Russian Academy of Sciences reported that more than half of the offspring of rats fed GM soy died within three weeks. By comparison, only 9% of rats died whose mothers were fed non-GM soy. Many offspring of the GM group were also much smaller than those of the control group. The study is definitely preliminary but the American Academy of Environmental Medicine asked the NIH to immediately repeat it. In November 2005, 
a 10-year, $2 million Australian project to develop genetically modified peas, was abandoned when the peas were found to create immune responses in mice. The results were discovered only after scientists used advanced tests that have never before been used for evaluating GM food. Those same peas could have sailed through the approval process if they had been tested like other GM foods already on the market. These articles are posted on the site, along with others about GM contamination, threats to biodiversity, and a deeper look at the science and technology. What follows now on this DVD is a film produced in India. It was designed for an Indian audience to document the experience of BT cotton farmers in Andhra Pradesh.